We're going to go ahead and get started, and hopefully more people kind of join us as um, the webinar con progresses. But thank you, everyone, for being here um, with us tonight. Um, my name is Aili Carrero Pinedo, and I am the um, <clears throat> Division 45 Student Committee Research Chair. And um, uh, along with that committee, uh, uh, under uh, Daisy's leadership, we really wanted to have special programming for um, racial and ethnic minority students, particularly um, students who will be attending APA um, this year and, and for future conventions. So I'll have um, Daisy introduce herself, even though I kind of just said that a little bit about her. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daisy Daniel. I am the current. Division 45 student representative, and I don't know what else you want me to say. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so kind of for the, um, the purpose of this panel, I will have also um, the, uh, the panelists kind of introduce themselves and just tell us a little bit about them. And then when we have some set of questions um, that we hopefully to kind of start some discussion um, with regards to the webinar. Um, so who would like to start? Well, I can go first. <laughs> um, I'm Joelle Taus-Tackman. I am the chair of the Committee for the Advancement of Racial and Ethnic Diversity with APEX. I'm just finishing up my two years um, as chair of that committee. And I've also been involved uh, with the Middle Eastern and North African Sikh Association. Hi, everyone. This is Roberto Abreu. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a new assistant professor as of this fall uh, in Tennessee University, and in, sorry, in Tennessee State University's Council of Psychology program. Um, I was Division 45 liaison for two years. Um, um, I'm, I'm also currently uh, still for being uh, with Orgullo, which is NLPA, the National Latino Psychological Association's LGBT group for about three years. And I recently got appointed to the um, ECP um, committee for Division 17. So I'm excited to be here and join you all. Um, and my name is Nelson Zumlame. I am currently at Indiana University. Um, I am one of the student liaisons for Division 45, and I also um, am a part of Division 51 as well. So, um, yeah, just thanks for everyone for being here and looking forward to having a good discussion. All right. Thank you, everyone, for introducing yourself. Uh, so the first question um, that we have for you is, what are two things that helped prepare you the most for APA? I will jump in. Um, so I would say the first thing was downloading the app. Um, it, and I understand not everyone's about technology, but it just made it a lot easier for me to find what was going on at that time on that day. And so that was huge for me, um, especially cause you can add them to your calendar and just like do a bunch of other stuff. There's also like, you can friend people, which is kind of weird to me, but that works too. So you can see what other people are going to and that's cool. Um, and then the second thing was not necessarily APA driven, but having business cards. So what I've done is if someone, so like say uh, Roberto gives me a business card, I would on the back of it write like how I met them and then like what they were interested in and like how that may apply to me just because you're going to meet so many people there that it's helpful to like a few weeks later go back and maybe email them. Okay, hey, uh, I talked to you the other day. It's really nice to meet you. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I would say that my first one um, ex is exactly what Daisa said. I, I think downloading, I think the first year I went, I actually had the, like, the printout version of the the convention. And, I mean, that was useful, but I think the app is a lot better. And so, you know, you can search 
you know, just so many things like people you can search um, by keywords and just figure out, you know, what's going on and things that you're interested in. You can go in and, you know, more or less make a schedule for yourself. That's incredibly helpful. So hour by hour or however you want to, you can go in and see what you want to um, like where it is, what you want to see and all these things. You can read bios and abstracts. And so I, I found that to be incredibly helpful. So I definitely recommend that. And then I think my second one would be um, try to go to some of the social hours. I think those are really important, not just for networking, but, you know, just for, for meeting people. It's, an, it's a good place to, you know, even if you're not necessarily trying to network in the more official sense, but just meeting people. Um, I mean, I think the reason why I actually became a 45 a liaison was because I went to the 45 social, I met Desa, I met some other people, got really excited about the division and then ended up applying um, in the fall of that year. And so, you know, a lot of opportunities can be opened up to you, even if you're not there to officially network, but I think you just kind of naturally fall into it. And so that would be my second one. It's just a great way to meet people, go for the ones that have free food, because um, you're going to get hungry. Um, yeah, so those would be my two. Yeah, I think those are all a great ideas. Definitely the, the social hours I find um, really helpful. I think my first time being at APA, I felt like I was going into some type of like a a car show because there's just like so much swag and all sorts of, you know, like banners and, and it can be intimidating um, for sure. But I think the first time that I went to APA too, I was really focused on kind of my area of like research and clinical interests and therefore missed out a little bit on trying to figure out, you know, what other places would there be ethnic minority research happening. And so now being a few years in, um, even though I'm not in counseling psychology myself, I've been able to identify like, okay, Division 17 has really great programming and they have a lot of ethnic minority oriented research. Um, and so just some other kind of key divisions that even though I'm not a member of um, where you can find programming that's of interest. Um, and so even just searching by the keyword for, you know, kind of whatever you're interested in and then seeing what divisions come up a lot can kind of help to, to make it a little less overwhelming when you come up with your game plan for where you want to go. Honestly, what I do is very similar to what everybody has said, but kind of just to kind of add to that is because um, I agree with, with what everyone has said. It's, so overwhelming there's so many things to do i mean there's a lot of things happening in the program uh it's a huge program either you download it or you can pick it up or whatever so usually what do i just look at the program and kind of narrowing it down you know what i'm saying the different divisions and different programming that i know now or or, or it is the first time you know topic of your interest and kind of narrowing it down because the, the reality is you cannot go to everything you might want to go to, right? Um, and then along with that, building in time for the other more like, you know, like division programming that is not really part of the program, but I'm sure you're getting tons of emails from like the, all the different division, you know, listservs about it. Oh, this social hour and the other social hour and the other social hour. So kind of like putting, putting those that I'm interested in. And I literally just create like, um, like you know like a schedule on friday from this time to this time i have this presentation i want to see this thing for the other time or the other time um i some things i guess that you know helped for me was like um i don't know create some like breaks in between uh all these different um you know all these different events and all these different presentations because i mean Again, I, I, I think somebody was using the uh, car show analogy that, yeah, abs there's so much to do. So, so creating an actual, you know, schedule works for me. And in there, I always make sure I, over, you know, prioritize um, having time to, you know, network with people or see people that I haven't seen in a while um, because they're in different universities, et cetera. So. Yeah, definitely sounds like um, what everyone is saying is like you kind of find your way to um, be able to find programming that was like unique to your needs. But definitely I agree that scheduling those breaks in between has been like so helpful because that helps me stay refreshed if I have presentations or um, if I want to have more energy to, you know, network with other folks who um, I haven't seen in a while, kind of like Roberto said, definitely. Um, so the next question um, that we have is, you already shared some of the things that you have done 
mostly probably because of like previous experiences, but what is something that you wish you knew before attending APA? Uh, so for me, I think something I wish I knew was being more strategic in my planning and not overdoing it. So I, I know that, for instance, Apex has a ton of stuff for, like, early morning breakfast. And there's times when we went to, like, the breakfast, which was fantastic because there's food. But, like, I realized that I, I can't really go to social the night before and then go to breakfast because I just was exhausted all the time. And so it's strange because there's so much to do, but I, I really wish I took more time to also like one enjoy the conference but also enjoy the location so like san francisco is so expensive you may not have an opportunity to go there again unless you live there and so like go to the Gold golden Gate bridge like if you have the 40 dollars for the tour do the tour like i think that professional development is like so important for our growth but then also realizing that these conferences are an opportunity to see like the city we're in and like to meet people outside of that so like skip the talk if you think that it's like not critical for you and like meet with someone for lunch or like get coffee like those the interactions in the interim have been so just beneficial for me and like my success at APA. I think that's a really great point I feel like even just physically leaving the building to like be outside and like breathe fresh air can be incredibly refreshing um I think for me too, like I'm, I, I know that I'm not very good at networking. Like I'm not good in like a big group, make a lot of connections quickly type of setting. And so um, for me, I wish that I had thought about that in terms of how can I have more of those smaller group conversations um, without having it to always be through networking. So I wish that my first year I would have gone to more of the uh, presentations that were discussion focused so that you can connect with other people and talk about topics that are of interest to you in a bit more of a structured setting um, versus I think I went to like a lot of symposiums where it's not as interactive. So to think not only about the content, but also the style of programming that maybe fits for you and what you're, what you're interested in. Yeah, I think for me, um, I think it's basically exactly what Daisy said in terms of my first year, you know, I had my schedule and I was ready to go and I was seeing things, you know, back to back to back to back and you don't realize just how exhausting um, all of that is. And so if you try to see everything um, and don't really take a second to breathe, but then also to, you know, really enjoy whatever city you're in, I, I think you, um, uh, yeah, personally, I don't think that's really a good idea. I mean, I kind of use going to APA each year as like a mini vacation for myself. And so now, you know, I think this is my maybe third year going, um, you know, I really do plan on sightseeing and in going with other people that are going to be there at the conference, but also just making sure that I see San Francisco because I'm probably not going to come back, you know, unless there's another conference there. And so, uh, but also, again, just taking breaks. It's really, really easy to get overwhelmed. It's really easy to get really exhausted. And so you want to just make sure that throughout your day, you know, just take a second to, to kind of step away and and I think that often happens, especially with first year students where they get so excited and it's good to be excited, but they just try to do everything. And then by the end of the first day, they're already incredibly exhausted. So just make sure you're taking your breaks and taking that time away from the convention to see the city and to do other things. And for me, I, I agree 100% with, with everything that has been said. And also I didn't bring cards with me on my first, my very first time to APA. So definitely bring business cards with you I think that'll be very 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 helpful because the reality is you're probably going to meet a lot of people um, um, you know so again going back to the, to, to the networking piece having those give, um, uh, business cards would be great yeah so it sounds like really prioritizing the self care piece and maybe even Thinking about it from the perspective of taking that break, it's also part of professional development because we need to kind of have the reset to be able to keep going. Not only that, but something that's been helpful for me is realizing that sometimes the programming that I want to attend may not be located in the same building. So really making time for that too. Um, for example, like hospitality stuff for Division 17, it's, it's not gonna be close to the Moscone Center um, this coming year. So just really keeping that in mind too, um, planning ahead with that. Uh, we're talking about, a lot about networking. So um, the next question really uh, related to that. How do you approach a potential mentor or another scholar you're hoping to speak with? 
Um, so for me, I think the biggest thing when approaching someone is remembering that they're like a human being. <laughs> um, and that something that's really helped me is that remembering that because we're all scholars in some way um, and not everyone is like very sociable or like very like extroverted, um, kind of just like opening a space and like asking those open-ended questions and really when you're going to talk to someone, scoping out like maybe their work. And I think that it could go either way. Like you may just run into someone and realize like you're fascinated by what they're doing. And so just really asking concrete questions and things like that, or getting a business card, asking for a business card so you can touch base with them later. Um, but realizing that like, if there's someone you want to talk to you and you 100% know that they're there, either like after their talk or um, some social setting, making sure you look up who they are and like what they're doing right now. Um, just because I think for me, especially it's been so difficult because I will love something they're doing, but they're not necessarily doing it anymore. And so it's helpful to just kind of know like what their current research plan is or like getting some general advice. Um, and then realizing that not all mentors are going to serve you in all ways or like no one mentor is perfect for every question you have. So be open to like mentorship in different ways from different people. Yes, and if you can, and if you have somebody, I think it helps um, to kind of add to what, um, you know, Diesel was saying. It, it kind of helps if you know someone, other does your advisor, uh, a mentor you have, uh, you know, a colleague, whatever. Some you know student from your program who knows someone who can introduce you to that person is almost like um like a warm type of you know introduction um that might not always happen but I think at least for me that was less um anxiety provoking and um yeah so you know having um having someone and also I a hundred percent agree with what Dee is saying about uh think about what you want right from mentors right because because people offer different things right so so what so at this point in your career in your development uh what do you need the most right or to the the two three things that you need and see who's the mentor who can offer that you know what i'm saying some mentors are super busy and they can uh, bring you on their research projects but they're not the best person for you to talk about how you're feeling you know uh, not navigating, you know, your life, you know, life, life as a student, etc. So, but some people are fantastic at doing, it, and they will sit down on the process. You know, they're amazing, they're, and they're amazing mentors to do that. So, sort of think about what is it that you want at this point in your development uh, from a mentor, and 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 if that if that person fits, you know fits that or not. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll be brief just to not be repetitive. I agree with everything that's already been said. The only thing that I'll add um, is don't forget to introduce yourself. I mean, I think that seems kind of um, like intuitive, but at the same time, you it's when you're in that moment, you see someone you, that you really admire, it's easy for you to kind of just jump into, oh, your work is amazing, you know, but don't forget to say like your name, like where you're from, what your research interests are, your clinical interests are, and start with that, um, because it's really easy, again, for you to forget to introduce yourself, then you might even have a great conversation. And then if you never even exchange names or anything like that, then it's you know, that might be a, a, a connection lost or something like that. Again, that's why you should have business cards, but just in the beginning, remember to introduce yourself. I think one thing that I'll add is that along with introducing yourself, realizing that people are very busy at APA. Like for some of us, APA is like a time, like obviously go see the city, but for some of us, like me or even other student leaders have a ton of stuff going on and so it's not that we don't want to speak to you in that moment but like you may need to walk and talk with us and so also being flexible and like what that conversation looks like so like after someone's talk realizing that there's maybe like 10 or 15 minutes transition time so you may not be able to like ask a thousand questions in that moment but asking them like oh can i walk with you or like will you be around later yeah, I think this is something that I'm definitely still um, working on, not, be, not being a great networking person, but 
um, like for someone like me, I'm, I'm really grateful for like the spaces that are kind of carved out to have those types of conversations. So like any of the division socials or, you know, like anything where it's kind of meant to be like a bit where there's more space for that. And, and you can approach someone when there aren't those time constraints, I think, um, really help quite a bit. And if you have seen someone's talk, I feel like that always helps for me to have something like really relevant that just happened that I can talk about, um, you know, so that it's a little less nerve wracking. Yeah, for me, it's been one of those things that I assume that people will like read my badge and they will automatically know who I am. So I don't have to like introduce myself. I definitely learned that the first time I was in APA um, in Denver. Uh, but yeah, introducing myself, so that's something that I've learned along the way that it's really important to create that connection. Um, so yeah, for sure. Um, uh, and I guess, <laughs> I, I apologize because we just came out of the Division 45 conference and my brain is like mush, but we actually have a mentoring event, which I guess I should talk about, um, and which is uh, Links and Shoulders. And so a lot of people think that Links and Shoulders is actually connected to Division 45, um, but it actually is sponsored by the president of APA. Um, so Jessica Henderson Daniels sponsors Links and Shoulders, and it's 100% a mentoring event for all students, but especially students of color. So we will have over 40 mentors there for an hour just talking about mentorship and like people who want to be a mentor. So um, that will be August. Of, that's not right. What day of the week is that? Friday? It's Friday. Okay. About the 10th. Um, August 10th. Yes. Yeah, I think it's the 10th. It's either Thursday or Friday, but it's right after the Division 45 business meeting, social, and then links and shoulders. So it's an opportunity to get lots of free food at the Division 45 social and then get food at links and shoulders. But it's all about mentoring. And so, sorry about that. Yeah, and then I will also be sending out um, some information with the student-focused of kind of like programming. That way it makes it easier to uh, for students, either first time or um, other students who maybe want a different kind of experience for APA convention this year. Um, instead of going through the whole thing, it's like there's any like student specific, they're gonna be able to see that there, and definitely Licks and Shoulders event will be highlighted there as well. So, um, all right, so we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, so, speaking of activities, then now, um, are there any events or activities at APA that have stood out for you? Um, every social, like <laughs> most all socials are going to have food. And so like San Francisco is expensive, eat for free. Um, but then also, and I'm not sure if Apex is doing this again this year, but they have like a, a breakfast that has been really helpful. Uh, it usually has like a mentor or someone talking about a topic, um, but it's also a really good way to meet other students. And so most of all my events are going to include food. Division 35 social is like, they spend thousands of dollars on their food, so definitely go to that one. <laughs> yeah, mine uh, is the same. Um, I actually uh, somehow last year managed to not spend a single dollar on food last year because I went to all the food, not all of them, but I went to a lot of them in Division um, like Apex has the breakfast and then Division 17, they're sweet. They actually had food throughout every single day. And so anytime I got hungry, I just went over there, um, got to meet some people, got to talk to people, spend a few hours there. And then later in the evening, go to something like, you know, Division 45 or Division 51. Someone has something going on, some sort of social that has food. Um, and so, you know, not only are you able to connect with people, you know, maybe new people, old colleagues, but then also, you know, um, having free food is, is really awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, the, what the Apex breakfasts are, they're now called cafe chat. So, um, you can look at that in the, in the program that that's a great thing. And yeah, the socials are always very, very fun and just a bit more casual. Um, for me, like what stuck, sticks out to me also is the, um, like any type of collaborative programming, I think is really interesting because you're getting a bunch of different divisions that are all saying this is important to us, like, you know, kind of across all these sections. And so um, that's, I think that has been some of the most interesting things that I've gone to because it's taken me a little bit out of my area of research and, and kind of broadened a bit of, of how I'm thinking about things. So I would definitely um, 
recommend that. And on the AP website, there's also like a special drop down section for student and ECP programming. So just looking through that might be might be useful to find some stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yes, to all the free food events. Yes. Um, and, and it's actually a nice time to me, you know, to connect with people as well. But if you have a chance to go to the vision, uh, so the vision 35, 45, sorry. And um, I think the vision 35, 45, um, there might be another division as well, who puts the dance together. Definitely attend that one. That was a lot of fun. So. Something else I would say is that, um, and we haven't really talked a lot, like we talked a lot about networking stuff, but um, there are also a lot of information events. So like if you want to find out about um, MFP, uh, Minority Fellowship Program, um, or scholarships and things like that, I know that they're not, like they're not as like sexy <laughs> like in terms of titles and like maybe people who may be there but it's a really good way to network with other students as well and really just get general information so like even if mfp might not be for you there's also a ton of other like fellowship um scholarship opportunities offered through those programming and that's a way to find out about like all the things happening there yeah absolutely for example mfp is going to be having their social hour um friday august 10th as well um in the evening so there's definitely an event that you want to check out there'll be a lot of like great not only like mentors but just leaders in the field um uh, particularly when it comes to racial and ethnic minority research um and policy and practice uh so the next question that i have is um which I, you know, we might have touched base on this overall but um what would be, what would you say is like the best way just overall to be able to navigate APA um, as a student? I think I would say like go in with a plan for the first day um, and like an idea of kind of what you want to do on the first day. And then like, maybe this is like my researcher and me, but then like, think about how that first day went and then like how you feel like so if you're tired or like you're excited and you like found something else that was interesting then being willing to change it up um just because I think there's so much stuff to do um and there's so many things going on all at once and so figuring out like an overall deal things that you want to do for the first day and then kind of over time being like okay maybe I'll change that up or do something different um <laughs> and then I would say making sure that you make time to watch walk the convention hall um, just because there's so many free resources in there and like swag um, and really cool things going on in there. Um, but if it's as big in other places, like you could spend a couple of hours there. And so realizing that like, if you want to do that, then you also have to make time for that. Any other tips as to like how you will go about navigating APA? Yeah, I think the biggest one would be going back to what we talked about before, just getting the app and having a plan. Um, and I think from there, you know, as Stacey said, just be flexible. Um, you know, you might meet people at an event or you might start a conversation even in the hallway as you're walking to an event. I'm, you know, all these things happen. And so, you know, don't feel as though if you're having a great conversation, but you know that you're about to, you know, you're, uh, you scheduled yourself to go watch a symposium or a post or something like that, you know, if you feel like it's um, an important conversation, just go ahead and stay there, have that conversation, you know, finish it off well. And then if you're able to catch the last half of that, you know, symposium, poster session or whatever, but again, having a game plan and being flexible, I think would be the best way to do it. But definitely download the app. I think that's, if I only had one tip, I would say that would be the the biggest one download the app spend some time before the convention going through it because it is really really big and that in itself takes you a while um so give yourself some time to go through it go through it you know by each day you could do it um and then just have that game plan but again as Stacey said just be flexible with that 
Yeah, I think there's no one right right way to do convention and you just have to kind of figure out what's right for you, what works for you. And, and I think that idea of kind of checking in with yourself at the end of each day is, is a great one. All right, Daisa, do you have any other questions for? Yeah, so I think we should talk about things we wouldn't do because <laughs> I feel like we've talked a lot about like all the greatness. Um, and so like for me, I think, and like I obviously will be at the Division 45 business meeting, but like if you're not super interested in like the going on and governance of a division or joining leadership one day, then I think as a student, it's almost something you can skip. Um, it's a good, th it's a good way to hear about what awards and like things that divisions are doing, which is really cool. Um, but it just reminds me of like a faculty meeting or like a lecture. And so I feel like those are opportunities to like meet with other people or get other stuff done. So that would be one thing. I have a couple others, but I'll let other people go. So like, what wouldn't you do? I would um, not like if you get to like let's say a symposium and you see the first presentation and then it's like another hour and a half and you really feel like this is not the topic for you like it is okay to get up and to leave after someone's presentation like I, I would not feel like you have to be stuck to staying in one place for a full amount of time just because you thought it was going to be of interest and people are really used to that at conferences you know it's, it's not rude maybe if you're in the front row and like knocking things over but like you know if you're in the back just you can quietly leave and, and I think that, that helps you to be energized by what you're doing for a convention um, and that is not something that I did earlier on I, I felt like I needed to just sit there so yeah I definitely noticed a shift between my first APA and the second one that I attended I was like ah, and then I it was more strategic as to like where I sat uh, as well so that helped me with that process Yeah. Uh, I'm just kind of go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, kind of just remember, like, you know, like grad school interviews or whatever. You you are on at that point, and so don't forget that you know these are um, either already professionals in the field, ECPs, but also you know even graduate students. These are people that are going to be your colleagues. Um, I mean, they're currently your colleagues, but once you graduate and move on to your profession, these are people that you're going to continue to see at APA Division 45 and other um, other conventions. And so really remembering yourself and, and not, you know, drinking too much at the social or, you know, just, you know, thinking that you're kind of hanging out with your buddies and maybe saying some things that you would maybe later regret, you know, just really remember that this is still a professional setting. And even if you might see other people not acting in the most professional way, you want to do your best to do so. And, you know, and, that, and you see that from time to time, but you want to, again, remember that you are on, that these people are implicitly or explicitly evaluating you in some way. And so you want to make sure that you are mindful of that. And the other thing I would add, which kind of goes along with what I was saying earlier, is that um, don't pack your schedule too much. Definitely have, um, uh, because, as, you know, somebody else was saying, not all presentations from being the same building and so forth. So definitely building time um, to do other things and have breaks. So don't put your schedule so, so tight to, you know. Uh, and if you miss something, that, you know, that's okay. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you know, you, you know, that's fine. It's, it's not a big deal. I think the last thing I would say is that, like, be authentically yourself. So, APA is really difficult because it's, it's this idea that, like, everyone shows up and everyone's perfect and, like, everyone's doing stuff. But I think, like, I think you do need to dress up in some kind of business attire and you do need to come like as professional as possible but like if you don't know someone or you don't know something just admit that you don't know it rather than making something up or pretending you do because that will end just ends up not working out very well and so more than anything regardless of what division it is or like what you're doing and we all know that 
our advisors require certain things and they require us to attempt certain things and, and all of that. But like when you have an opportunity to really decide for yourself, just being yourself and like showing up as who you ever you are uh, and then being okay with that because the people who value you the most will invite you to other stuff and like want to get to know you for you rather than like, like no one wants to meet someone and then feel like they're trying to prove something just because whether you're in academia or clinical or whatever it is, it's already like life is already hard enough. <laughs> There's so like many challenges as students already. So like if you could come to APA and show up as whoever you are and just be comfortable with that, um, then people will be like, super excited to meet you and will embrace you like for who you are. So I guess we'll see if anyone has questions. You guys can unmute yourself or type it in the chat box. So I have more questions because I can just do all this all day. <laughs> so um, I know, I know. So um, like I said, just at the Division of 45 conference. And so I'm wondering for all of you, like what is one of the hardest things about like not just balancing the schedule, but like balancing the non-private time? Because like what, I feel like once you walk into convention or like, even if you're staying in a sponsored hotel, like even to just go get a coffee is an opportunity to like run into someone. So like, how do you all balance that aspect? I think for me, it is about like the leaving the convention center and going and doing something else. So like, for example, last year when APA was in DC, like all the museums in DC are free. So I left and I just went to the National Portrait Gallery for like an hour and just was alone with the art and then, you know, felt like much, you know, calmer and like I'd had some time to myself and then was able to go back in. Um, so building that in, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, I think just leaving, um, definitely, because I did the exact same thing, saw the monuments, saw the museums and and I plan to do um, a similar thing this time, just leaving, going to see Golden Gate, going to get some good seafood and just, you know, spending time with, um, you know, people that I know that are going to be there that um, you don't feel any sort of pressure to, you know, act a certain way or um, or to kind of be on, I guess is the, the phrase I'm using. So still being authentically yourself, even though when you're being professional, as Desa was mentioning, but, you know, there are certain people that obviously you probably know better that you feel like you can kind of um, just you know, just be there and not have to be so on, I guess, yeah. Yeah, to be, and, and not, and not one, you know, repetitive, but yeah, definitely just stepping away and doing some of the other stuff, you know, sightseeing or not. I've also gone with family before, so, you know, I've gone with my husband before, and, you know, the last two days, so, or, you know, I'm going to go to this, um, you know, presentations, I'm going to go to this, you know, receptions, but then, the rest of the day or whatever we're going to do stuff on our own and just walking away from it. Yeah. For me, it's been more surprisingly, I've used the time that I kind of want to spend to like by myself to, uh, I've gone to like the where all the information is and try to see what, if there's any sort of, um, events or activities, uh, geared towards like relaxing so I've gotten like massages in the past and I see that they're gonna be you're gonna be able to like pet puppies this time around so different things like that that kind of help me kind of ground me the way I'd be able to keep going for the uh, you know let's just say if I go on a Thursday to, to have energy for like Friday and Saturday things like that is what I try to put into my schedule so I literally schedule free time or time I want to be like okay you're on your own for this that has helped me And so, like, as a follow-up to that, like, especially for students who are maybe traveling alone or are just traveling with people from their school, 
what is one way for all of you that you've like met other students or like met other like not necessarily like just peers but people who are like there who aren't necessarily like mentors I think that just requires you to, you know, kind of, um, I'm generally kind of a more of an introverted person. And so sometimes, you know, talking to people and whatnot kind of um, makes me a little anxious, but just challenging yourself to go ahead and have that conversation to start that, you know, sometimes when you go to certain um, events, where you have a specific uh uh, research interests or clinical interests, you might start to see either like one person or like a group of people that kind of, you know, throughout the either the, the first day or just throughout the time you start to see them going through the same things. And so I think that kind of makes it easier because it's pretty evident that they probably have a similar whatever that interest is in you and just starting up that conversation. But I think, um, again, the socials are the best place in my mind to do that because literally it's set up for people to talk. And so, you know, you have your food and you're just, you know, hanging out with people and, you know, you'll probably, it's, it's really easy to kind of just turn to someone and just say like, Hey, like, who are you? You know, and it, and it's not weird. It's not awkward generally for you to literally just go ahead and talk to someone. I, again, I, um, I think the 45 one, it was like two years ago, I think I was just standing there eating and there was a professor who started talking to me. Um, and then that professor worked with Desa and then when she came over, you know, I got to talk to her a little bit. And so that has happened in a number of different spaces with like Division 51 and, and, and other division programming that I've been a part of. Yeah, for me, um, I've volunteered in the past for one of the divisions that I'm in, uh, for Division 17, and that has given the opportunity to talk to other students who also be volunteers with me. Um, and then kind of like, it was like a chain reaction after that, because then you will have, not only will like meet other students who will come in and ask questions, but also where I was volunteering with me in the same shift and I was able to connect with them um, as well. So that's been one way for me. Yeah, I think um, I don't have much more to add except for um, maybe to say like there's also like poster sessions like there's always like the late breaking poster session that Apex puts on that's all students and people are usually very excited if you are interested in their research and want to talk about their poster and you know it's not as heavily trafficked so if you like kind of more of that like one on one or smaller group like that's there's always lots of students congregating around that and it's pretty chatty. <laughs> Yeah, I think Apex does a pretty good job overall just because they, like, they have, what are the breakfasts called again? A, something called Cafe Chats this year. Chats. Um, I like it. Um, but then also the uh, Apex Social usually is at a super cool location, and that's, like, they had, like, Lifeside Jenga last time, and that was really fun. So it's, like, an opportunity to, like, hang out in a different space. Um, and then some divisions have student socials. Division 45 has a student social. Um, that will be predominantly students as well, so. So last question, if other people don't have questions, is we've talked a lot about, I feel like, from a perspective as a grad student. And so for all of us, like, what is one thing you would tell maybe an undergrad or, like, a master student of, like, things that they should know going into APA? Yeah, it's, it's a tough question. I mean, I think like a lot of what I would think about would be the same. And I, if I think about myself as an undergrad or like, you know, another undergrad student, it would just be to, you know, know that you deserve to be there also. Um, and that it, I find like as a graduate student, it's, it's really exciting when you meet undergraduate students that are excited about research and excited about their future career and kind of reminds you, you know, if you get a little bit stuck in, in what you're doing. So, um, for undergrads, I would say, you know, just feel free to just jump in. Like, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to um, to go to whatever programming, you know, you want to. Like, feel like you can leave the session if you want. Um, you know, th that it's, it's your conference as much as, as a graduate student or as a, as a professor. Yeah, and I think going off of that, you know, um, one thing that's already been said that I think is really important is that um, you know, graduate students, uh, faculty members, professionals, they're all people. And so, you know, they like to talk, gen well, not everyone, but I mean, 
you know, if, <laughs> um, you know, just starting a conversation with that, I mean, they're probably going to be excited to, to see an undergrad there. And so I think, you know, if you're able to have a conversation with them about your research, they're able to see your passion, your excitement. Um, that's something that might um, come off as really impressive that you're an undergraduate student at, you know, such a large national conference. And so that actually probably be to your advantage and so you know just going in with that mindset I think would be really important and then um, those individuals individuals that you meet whether they be graduate students um, or you know beyond might be more interested in mentoring you for that specific reason I mean maybe not but again just having that mindset of um, as as was just said you know you this is your conference too you deserve to be there and so don't you know don't feel um kind of just challenge yourself to if you are a shy person or if you're a little apprehensive about it challenging yourself to have those conversations to start those conversations um and to just you know let yourself shine yeah and i think i will um echo what daisa was saying earlier about being authentic and also not being afraid to ask questions and if it's maybe less, a little less intimidating to ask a graduate student or a doctoral student um, for any question, you know, once you identify that that's who they are, uh, you know, um, to help kind of like mediate, kind of like help you kind of navigate a little bit of that process and maybe ask them questions about what their experiences have been if they um, have attended, you know, conferences like this one um, in the past. Yeah. And this is more of a global feed, um, you know, like um, something I would say to an undergraduate. Uh, just, you know, just be open-minded, you know, to explore. This is a huge field. Um, I mean, at least for myself, I would have never thought I was going to be a counseling psychologist, you know. Um, you might have an idea of what psychologists like or a different field of psychology that you like. And actually, through meeting other people, you know, graduate students, professionals, going to different presentations, you may change your mind. And I think that's exciting, you know. So I think, you know, keep, keep, keep it an open mind. Um, it's important. Yeah, I think overall, I would say two things. So one, I would say, um, and something that actually Dr. Uh, Gigi Awad has told me, is that, like, no one actually knows who you are. And you get an opportunity to like tell them who you are. And I think that's the coolest thing about EPA, um, just because there's thousands of people there. And so you really get to define who you are in that space. Um, and then along with being authentic, I would also say, make sure that you ask questions because your world is wide open. So if you're at APS undergrad, like you get to meet people and decide if you want to apply to their grad program. Like, take your gut feel and take your experience of how people treated you in that space um, and use that to define like if you want to go to grad school and like what programs you want to go to um, just because like if I wish that I had met some of the people I knew at certain programs it really would have dictated like how I applied if I was when I was going into grad school or thinking about grad school, but then also like what research I wanted to do. I feel like APA just like blew my mind in terms of research being offered because I only knew what was happening at my school. And so it's just such a great opportunity to see what's happening right now and like very current in the last year. And then if anything, and you feel overwhelmed, I'd say like, forget everything and like, have a good time and like go to the Golden Gate Bridge and just like make some friends because I feel like like the people on this webinar are people that I met through APA and so I'm like I feel pretty lucky and pretty blessed to do that so any final thoughts Are the other questions that came up for um... the only last Thought that I have is uh, just make sure that you follow up with people so people that you meet at the conference you get their business card you have a great conversation you know um, every year afterwards I think it's usually like the Monday or Tuesday um, after the conference I'll just send you know short emails to people that I met that I had good conversations with that I hope to stay in touch with and you know maybe you'll collaborate with that person maybe not but I think it's just nice to say you know hey um, it was great meeting you at you know whatever 
or at 8 p.m. in general, if it was a specific, you know, uh, social hour or whatnot, just given the context. And then um, just look forward to seeing you again. Or again, if that is something you really want to follow up with in terms of collaborating, then that's how you can initiate that collaboration. But just um, just following up with those people that you met, I think is really important. And some of the people that I have done that with are people that I see every year at the convention. And so starting to, to build, you know, um, a stronger relationship with those individuals as years go on. So yeah, just follow up people i definitely agree with that um and because i did that i'm actually this year i'm presented with some of the people that i've met in the previous two years when i've attended so it's definitely created a like um you know, like an increase in professional networks but also um we've been able to support each other through our programs and our experiences as graduate students so i found external support systems um to be able to go through my degree Any other final thoughts? I would say like, just finally, and I know this is like better in theory, but try not to stress. I feel like there's just so many moments that APA can be very stressful in just different spaces and at different times. And I think that you're putting a lot into this by getting to San Francisco and putting a lot into this by showing up to a conference in the first place, whether you're attending or presenting. And so trying to just keep perspective or like I said, stay grounded and like just kind of go with the flow just because things will happen. Like presentations will be canceled. Like um, things will get moved. You'll not realize that something's a lot further away than it actually is. And so just like, there's a lot of times that I just laugh at myself and I'm just like, it's going to be fine because everything will work out. And the fact that you came or are able to come is huge already. And so giving yourself that credit, because it takes a lot to show up to a conference and conferences can be very expensive. And so realizing that it's just a journey and like you've made it this far. So like, just keep like laughing, I guess is what I would say. <laughs> And be sure to pick up some free stress balls um, as well to, to help with that. So <laughs> there's gonna be puppies there. Like yeah. that literally just made my whole day. Like I just like done <laughs> puppy and, and yeah. goat yoga if that's something you're interested in as well. Did you say hot yoga? Goat yoga. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is a thing. I got it yesterday in the mail. So yeah, goat yeah. yoga and pet a puppy park yes <laughs> um but i also wanted to give uh, joelle just a quick like opportunity to um just mention a little bit about cared um the way students know um what you know this part of it, like apex sure yeah um yeah so cared is the commit uh, committee for the advancement of racial and ethnic diversity and so um we have six people on our committee and just two different um, projects all focused around um, students of color in graduate school. Um, and CARED, you know, like we're really focused in this one area and it's, it's definitely a popular committee. Um, but I think that there's also so many other great opportunities to become involved with APEX that when I applied, I just applied to CARED. I was like, this is my area of interest. You know, this is what I want to do. Um, but, you know, I would say for any student that's interested in leadership, particularly in APA governance, like if you have an interest in policy, um, I would definitely apply for any of the, the member at large roles. Um, it tends to be, uh, we tend to not get many applications for that. Some positions run unopposed and it's a great opportunity for students um, to really have a voice in what's happening within APA to be able to comment on policy that's coming through other um, boards. Um, so I, I would I would encourage anyone that that's interested in that to to go out for some of those positions. The call should be I think in September um, to start in in January. Um, and there's a number of other committees as well. There's um, So Good, which is a sexual orientation, gender diversity committee. There's a science committee, advocacy coordinating team, convention committee, of course, that does all the convention stuff. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, feel free to to reach out um, to me about about any of that. There's, there's lots of ways to be involved with APEGs, but I feel like they're not always well advertised. So, um, yeah. 
Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, um, for being uh, here with us this evening and for making all the different uh, time zones work. That's always a challenge. So I'm very thankful for your time, all the advice, the expertise that you've developed as professionals. Um, and um, just for the students, uh, we will be posting this webinar um, in the, um, on the listserv in the next few days. So if you have any other questions, feel free to email me and um, also we'll be sharing some other information um, as we go. So, all right, that should be it for tonight. Oh. Okay. Thank yeah. you, everyone.